Hello, hope you're having a nice day. So, the next-gen NASCAR Cup cars have been unveiled, and I think they're quite cool, because they've finally got underfloor aero, which I'm kind of surprised they've left the rough floors for so long, especially since they are high-speed oval racing cars. So, that's a bit of a shock. But I'm glad it's finally happened, and today I'd like to talk about the aero and how it's changed the cars in various ways, because I think it's quite interesting. In an attempt to try and keep this brief and hopefully easy to follow for anyone watching, uh, a lot of my diagrams and explanations will be generalizations. I do think they are accurate, but they're not like sort of perfect and in-depth explanations. I am happy to explain anything further in the comments or in future videos, so please just ask, and I'm happy to talk in the comments or on my Discord server. So let's actually talk about the cars. They all feature the same spec under tray, which will help improve both downforce and reduce drag. Also featured our front and rear diffusers to further help these areas. Uh, we can see the rear diffuser quite prominently on the rear. Above it is, and this is something that I only found out recently when watching a seminar by the person in charge of aerodynamics in NASCAR, Dr. Eric Jacuzzi, which is a great name by the way, that they feature a little flap on the diffuser. So if the curls get turned around, the flap is deployed by air pushing down on that little section above it and that closed the flap and reduced the amount of air getting under the car, which is a great feature, I think. Uh, the front diffusers are quite hidden. I only noticed them when in one of the Mustang promo pictures you can see them in a, uh, the reflection on the floor. If we move round to the front of the car, we can see there's a front splitter, and in the middle of it is a raised section. Now, this for ground clearance reasons, but it's not to do with previous incidences like cars losing their front ends going off track over grass. The under tray always wants air flowing underneath it. You don't want to choke out the under tray and the diffusers. So by having that raised center section, if the car pitches forward under braking, the sides of the splitter can hit the ground and stop the car from going any further, while air can still flow through that raised section. Now the older cup cars didn't have anything like this because they didn't have a smooth underbody so when you have something like that you don't want to encourage any air going underneath the car but with these smooth floors you do want air going under the car. Now while aerodynamically the under tray is a big advantage you do need to find a way to cool the parts that now have nowhere for the heat to escape to you're just sort of blocking everything in so heat from the engine and the exhaust get trapped that's why there are vents along the side of the car to help air out from the uh, side exit exhausts and there are also now vents on the bonnet to help get air out of the engine bay. One thing I do quite like is they're one of the a few areas free for manufacturers to make modifications so let's take a look at the differences between the teams. Now for a vent to work the air above it needs to be a lower pressure than the air below it. Air always wants to move from high pressure to low pressure so to make the vent work you want to create a low pressure area in some way. Now Ford does this by using backward scoops. The air, you know, is forced over the scoop and creates like a wake area that the air vented out of the engine bay can get into. The Camry, in a similar way, has an extrusion to force air upwards and over to create a pocket of low pressure air that can be vented into. The Camaro, meanwhile, does without either of these. It uses some turning vanes to help direct the air out, but it uses its placement on the bonnet to extract air. This is kind of like how wing works, so as the air flows around the curve from the front bumper to onto the bonnet, it accelerates and its pressure lowers, so the pressure at the front of the bonnet is going to be a bit lower than the pressure, say, at the base of the windscreen. So for that reason, there's a lower pressure area and they can use, and they can vent into that area. Now I can't really say if one device has a significant advantage over the others. You would think maybe that the Camaros would be the most aerodynamic, since nothing about it is sticking up, but if it's less effective then maybe there's a disadvantage and they need to run more front cooling for example. It's hard to say really. The only other major difference between manufacturers I think is that there's some differences in the rear quarter windows, where they make the knackerducks for cooling things like the rear brakes, that's not anything new to NASCAR Cup cars, they've been there for ages, 
so nothing really to talk about there. If you are interested to know more about Nacaduct, I do have a video explaining how they work. And that's pretty much it. Uh, thank you for watching. Once again, feel free to ask any questions in the comments. Please leave a like if you've enjoyed, as it means a lot to me. And subscribe to Boost Ethanol for more. Have a nice day.